How are you doing, guys, girls? Red Wings are playing the Capitals tonight at 6 p.m. Central Time. The Capitals have won seven of the last ten, 10 games. Red Wings have lost five straight. In the month of December, they are 2-6. and six. The most recent win came against the Tampa Bay Lightning. They won to lose to the Panthers, 1-5, 2-3 to two to, three to the Stars, 0-1 uh, to the Hurricanes. Wild, they lost 1-4 in the Senators, like I just said, they lost by three. Brutal game to watch. At least they picked up a game, uh, a point against the Stars in overtime. So why did they lose this game, and why have they been playing so booty cheeks? You know, teams they've been playing have just started to get better and better. Almost all the teams I mentioned just now were our danger teams, with the exception of the Senators, who are, you could say are our bubble team, kind of close to the skill level of the Red Wings. Um, this trend is going to continue for the rest of the season. The Red Wings have a very difficult schedule coming up in their last 50, <clears throat> 52 games, which I'll touch on a little bit later. First of all, shout out to Lionel Messi. That game last night was so, yesterday morning was so much fun to watch. Not a huge fan of soccer, but I really appreciate it. I mean, how could you not? Um, scoring back and forth, PKs, extra time, lots of yellow cards given out. Messi scored two, Mbappe scored three. Uh, every player you want wanted to do well except for you know some of Francis stars who were either injured or got taken out because they were anonymous during the game. So Red Wings are playing the Capitals, but why did they lose against the Senators and why have they been losing injuries? Uh, people not playing in the lineup. Mata um, was missing for a time. Um, you know, Helberg got put in because the Dalkovich has been up and down all year long. Um, I forget who else was playing. Soderblom came back, so that was nice. But they ended up letting the Senators go on the power play five times. Yeah, that's right, five times, which is actually not surprising. The Ottawa Senators go on the power play the most out of any team in the NHL. They do it 3.9 times per game, and their power play is pretty good. It's no slouch. They score 28% of the time, which is fourth best. Red Wings, they do not take that many penalties. So they average three point, let's see, 3.7 penalties per game, which is, no, that's not exactly right. They take 3.5 penalties per game, which is fourth lowest in the league. Very good stat to have. Um, but their PK is kind of falling apart. It is clicking at 76.8%, uh, which is now only three points above what they had last year when they were bottom of the league. That... Uh, is not the only part of their special teams that's lacking. Their power, their power play, which guess how many they had in the game against the Senators? They had seven. They went one for seven. Their power play is um, at 19.8%, which is 24th best in the league. I don't know exactly what they were at last year, but um, throughout the first, or the first 30 games of the year, they've not been playing the hardest teams, and they've been hovering around the 16-17 um, position penalty kill and power play but their schedule is getting much 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 more difficult so you can't take a lot of penalties um, against teams that have great power plays and once you do get power plays and you're not capitalizing on them it's the recipe for disaster uh, well, last thing about the senators is their uh, one of their forwards austin watson got suspended for a shoulder check an illegal one on dylan larkin at 702 left in the first period the Red Wings dumped the puck into the Senators' zone. Larkin scanning between the hash marks. Austin Watson comes up in front of him for some reason. The puck is nowhere near him. Decides to like kind of jump backwards and hit Larkin in the head with his shoulder elbow area. Larkin falls to the ice, clearly pissed, because he ended up taking a retaliatory penalty on him. The minute left in the period on a cross check off the faceoff. So I think the Senators might have scored off that power play. They went three for five. It was just an abysmal, an abysmal looking game. Uh, the money that was uh, deemed uh, a penalty ends up going to the Players Emergency Assistance Fund, if you wanted to know, and it's the max for that kind of penalty. They called it interference. I mean, that's pretty much what it was, and that is directed to former NHLer, NHLers that may qualify, you know, players that retired, they need money for, for one reason or another. So Red Wings, they've not been hot recently, and they're kind of coming up on a team that is pretty hot, and uh, with a player that is looking to tie the second leading goal scorer of all time. Now, as a Red Wings fan, I would not, I would very much like not, very much like to not see that happen. But as a fan of the sport, I would very much like to see Gordy Howe's record get broken by Ovechkin, a player that totally deserves it. So we'll see if that happens or not. Uh, it's going to be 801, then 802 to get the record. All right, let's talk about the Red Wings schedule coming up the rest of the season. They have 52 games left. 
Uh, I've classified the types of teams they are going to be playing in the categories of danger, bubble, and should win games. Let's talk about the should win games first. So uh, these teams include Columbus, Arizona, Philadelphia, Chicago, Montreal, San Jose. Now these teams are bottom feeders. They don't have the best, they don't have the deepest rosters. They have some injuries, uh, but overall they're just not very good teams. The Red Wings have played uh, these teams respectively six times. They will play them nine more times and they have an 80% winning percentage against them. That should earn them 15 points. Let's move on to the bubble teams. They are going to be playing, let's see, 16 games against bubble teams, which includes Buffalo, Ottawa, New York, Islanders, uh, which are fringe danger team, is a fringe danger team, Seattle, Vancouver, Nashville, St. Louis, Calgary. Calgary and St. Louis, you could argue, argue are also fringe danger teams, but they have had goalie troubles. Um, Markstrom is allowing some like ridiculous amount of first goals scored. So that has uh, added to the Flames' struggle. And those are the teams that have similar points, very similar roster makeup. Um, like, for instance, Buffalo's Tage Thompson. Similar, or Their roster is very similar, but they have a couple superstars on their lineup. I don't know if you could call Jeff Skinner a superstar, but uh, Rasmus Stalin and um, Owen Power could be. Tage Thompson certainly is at the present moment. They have a .4 winning percentage against those teams, which equates to uh, 6.4 wins and 12, 13 additional points. So they have uh, we just covered 20, 25 games. The remaining 27 games are against what I call the danger team. So think about that. 27 against danger teams, 16 against bubble teams, 9 against should win teams. The danger teams are pretty obvious. Boston, Vegas, Carolina, Toronto, New Jersey, Dallas, Winnipeg, Tampa Bay, New York, Rangers, Pittsburgh, Edmonton, Colorado, Florida, Washington. Uh, you know, they all have superstars on their teams. They have uh, fairly decent special teams. They performed in the playoffs last year. They're high in the standings at the present moment, and some of the player, some of the teams are expecting players to return from Injury, you know, look at Toronto. They got Morgan Riley and Jake Muzzin on LTIR. I don't know if they're going to come back before the end of the season or playoffs. Uh, the Capitals just got Darcy Kemper back from IR. He's not going to be playing this game. It's going to be Charlie Lindgren, but they still have Tom Wilson, Carl Hagelin, uh, Nicholas Backstrom out for the time being. So these teams are exceptionally good, and the Red Wings have won, uh, have a 33% winning percentage against them in 12 games played. I know that's not the largest sample size, but they're going to play these teams 27 more times. And if that trend continues, they're going to get 18 more points. So add all that up, Red Wings have an expected 46 more points to gain. They're currently sitting at 32 points. So uh, I'm guessing their current 11, uh, what is it, 11, 19? I forget what the record is right now. Uh, 11... 13 and 6. I see them getting 36 wins, 40 losses, and 6 overtime losses, which is good for 78 points. Now, that is 4 points better than what they got last year when the record was 32, 40, and 10. Uh, I'm not really doing that much work to include overtime losses. So, it'll probably, my guess is the Red Wings finish with around 78 plus or minus 4 points, which is kind of what people projected them to be. Hovering around like fringe, bottom feeder playoff, uh, uh, trying to get into the playoff teams. Uh, the last year, the worst team was Montreal. They had 55 points. Uh, Arizona had 57, and Seattle had 60. If you're wondering where they're going to end up falling in the draft spot, the draft uh, draft positioning. Last year, they were the 25th. They had the 25th worst record. So who knows um, where they're going to slide? You know, it's a lottery, so they could end up um, getting lucky and having a higher pick. Because of because of the odds, but yeah, I don't think they are going to do very well the remainder of the season. Uh, the scariest team they have to play three more times is include Toronto three, Tampa Bay three, Pittsburgh three. Um, they play Boston twice in a back to back. Uh, they're going to play Winnipeg, who's having a great season, two more times. Uh, they haven't played Edmonton, Colorado, uh, or Colorado yet. So just a scary remainder of the season. They're probably going to get Verona back. Uh, shortly, Fabry is expected to return uh, at the in the new cal- next calendar year. Uh, Bertuzzi, I'm sure, will return at some point. So the team is going to look a lot different going forward. Um, we might be able to take a breath, but who knows um, what other injuries are going to happen if Huso, for some reason, uh, knock on wood, goes out. Um, I mean, you could foresee 
the, with the season Nadakovich is having, and you know with Helberg as their as their one and two, could get tricky. But um, they're going to play tonight against the Capitals. Again, they've lost five straight. Um, they haven't looked good, but they spent the entire practice on Sunday working on the power play and penalty kill. I know one day doesn't make make a difference, but Huso is going to be in that, and we're going to probably going to see Larkin and Hronik out there. You know, um, last thing is I'll say is shout out to Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves, who played their thousandth career game together. They've each played a thousand games respectively, but this is their thousandth. That last night was their thousandth game skating on the ice at the same time all on the same team uh, when they got shit pumped against the one of the danger teams, the New York Rangers. So Red Wings play at 6 o'clock. That's three, uh, two hours, 20 minutes from now. I'm looking forward to it and the remainder of their season, even though I'm kind of scared. All right, cheers.